right. For the agenda, we're going to start with the City of Valdosta cases. First one up is VA 2024-02. Mr. Martin, please. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a re uh, resigning request by Trevor Shaw uh, to rezone a total of 9.89 acres from single family residential R15 to a combination of R10 and R6 and to break it down by acreage, the, the proposal is for 4.18 acres of that to go to R10 and 5.71 acres to go to R6. Property is located at 3305 and 3317 Cherry Creek Road. This is the very southern end of Cherry Creek Road, uh, right before it turns into North Oak Street Extension. Um, subject property currently contains two single-family residences, one on each tract. Applicant is proposing to demolish each of those houses and then resubdivide the property into a conventional single-family subdivision based on a split zoning pattern, which is there in the packet, and we'll get to the details of that in a moment. But just in a nutshell, the packet or that layout shows a total of 34 lots, 14 of them under R10 zoning and about 20 of them under R6. Character area is established residential for this property and most of the surrounding area. Notice that part of the property directly to the south is Neighborhood Activity Center. Um, and as you see on the zoning map, that's where you see some of the higher intensity zoning districts. <coughs> aerial imagery, subject property is mostly forested. This aerial was taken before our Hurricane Idalia came through a few months ago. So there's a little less tree canopy here um, than there used to be, but that is the same throughout the city. Boundary survey in your packet shows the split of the zoning. Note that it's a belt of R10, L-shaped, around the western and northern sides of the property, where it abuts existing R15 zoning, uh, Windsor Park and Windsor 2 neighborhood. And then the rest of the property is R6, but it's more in the interior. Subject property, this is the southerly most house with the long driveway leading in from Cherry Creek. Um, look across the front yard, you see a lot of the tree damage that is there, and this is indicative for both properties. Um, looking back at the intersection of North Oak Extension and Cherry Creek, this is the traffic light. Um, looking directly northeast from the subject property. Um, across the intersection off to the east is an existing uh, multifamily apartment complex of Free Oaks. And then views looking southward down Cherry Creek back toward in Perimeter Road. And then some of the houses in Random Order, this is along Breckenridge. A uh, few houses I took there as examples and then rounding the corner into Windsor 2 and a couple of the houses that are there. This is the northern and western sides of the subject property. When you get into the neighborhood to the south, I think this one is Lennox Drive. On the western side, this is that PRD 15 zoning that you see on the zoning map. This is looking northward up that street where it simply dead ends into the subject property. The next street over is Sussex. And again, the view looking northward up toward the subject property which is that tree area that you see in the background. A uh, closer view of some of the houses on Lennox and Sussex, and you see it's narrower lots. Um, I think they're about 60 feet wide and deep, um, and contain houses that are, I think, around 1,200 square feet. There's some sampling views there. Um, in your packet is the conventional layout. The shaded area, again, is that R10 proposed zoning around the north and western sides. Um, this is the surveyor's rendition of how it might look. Notice that the lot sizes are 10,000 square feet or more within that area. And then the white cross-patched area is the R6 portion. And again, something to point out, these are not 6,000 square foot lots, but they're all over 8,000. And that is because of the geography. Um, some of the driving features that dictate this layout is a subdivision layout here is required to tie in its road system to Sussex and Lennox Drive on the south and they need an entrance of some kind um, to the east. And if there's going to be one there, it needs to line up with that traffic light um, so we don't have an awkward intersection spacing. That more or less dictates a street layout within. You can shift it a little bit. But what the applicant has done is minimize the R10 area to not go beyond the right-of-way of what would come through and let the street simply be the, the zoning boundary within the proposed development. With R10 lots on one side, R6 pipe lots on the other side. I'm all tied together in the subdivision. Um, engineering has not left the preliminary stages for this, but you see they are showing some provisions for stormwater retention, which of course would be required with the subdivision design. So again, the zoning 
currently is R15. The proposal is to go to a combination of R10 and R6 as shown. And with that, staff has found the rezoning request consistent with the comprehensive plan, consistent with the standards for exercise and zoning power. All those are detailed there in your packet. And we are recommending approval of it as presented. The applicants are here, but I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have. The way they are shown is they would get their access from Cherry Creek. Um, I think we would all agree that is less than desirable um, for the city and for those future lot owners. And that is would likely be something that comes up during the subdivision review process. Had many discussions with the applicants and their design team about how to design this eastern side of the property. There are many different ways to do it. Um, you notice there's a short cul-de-sac street that goes off to the southwest. Um, you could easily do something similar, perhaps smaller scale to the northeast. What that would do and shift it around a little, but I think with some good engineering you could make that such that all the lots on the eastern boundary face inward, so we avoid having driveways on the Cherry Creek. Um, I would anticipate once it gets to a subdivision stage that that would be a conversation. Um, part of the variables in this is trying to identify exactly where the low spots are. We know this property has a low spot on the west and on the east, so the detention ponds start really affecting that design. Probably more importantly, the sizes of those ponds would affect a lot of things. So there's some moving targets in that part of the equation. But yes, what they're showing really, this is a demonstration of how many lots with an approximate configuration of what needs to be. Um, but as I stated, the street pattern pretty much is set by existing geography. And it's really a matter of how to arrange the lots around the perimeter area. But yes, that is something I noticed in the beginning as well. Any other questions? All right, we'll now enter the public hearing portion of this case. Is there anyone here that would like to speak in favor of this case? If so, please come forward. State your name and address. Zachary Howard, 109 West Bear Street. I'm going to turn here in my last session. Speaking on behalf of Mr. Shaw, um, I appreciate Matt's help. He met with us several times and kind of helped us formulate this plan. Um, we want to make sure it was part of the comprehensive plan. Um, as he outlined the, the zoning that backs up the Mental Park subdivision, we're requesting the R10, which I know it's R15, and then the R6 zoning is requested at the southern part of it. It's consistent with what's below it. And actually, I believe one is zoned to RP directly south of it, but you can go part of the complex zone. So this is intended to be a residential neighborhood, 12 to 1,600 square foot houses. Um, there will be restricted covenants in the subdivision. Um, the desire is hopefully older adults that are getting close to retirement that don't want as big a yard but want a nice area in a convenient part of town. We feel like this is consistent with what's around there. Obviously, there's apartments and commercial all around it. Um, and it's hopefully going to be a nice neighborhood that um, hopefully will increase the property value there by the round. I know it's kind of an eyesore now, everybody that rides by there just sees trees down everywhere. With that, I can answer any questions. <coughs> there is, as Matt outlined, an exit on Sussex Road and Lennox Road, um, as well as Cherry Creek. And I believe there's long term plans from the engineering department to address the concerns that everybody has on Cherry Creek Road. Um, we don't really think that it would add more than maybe six or seven more homes to this area if the zoning request is approved. So it's not going to be a tremendous difference. In, you know, traffic on Cherry Creek Road. Any questions? Any questions for Mr. Cowart? Mr. I'm sorry, I did, Mr. Cowart. So, Mr. Cowart, you're saying uh, as it is currently zoned, you can get about 28 homes in there now. That's, that, what you're I, that's I believe that's the calculations. We sat down and did the math in okay. Matt's office. Okay. And so, I believe this would be 36 or 37. It's, I believe the calculation is 2.9 per 
pay through the market thing. So you're but actually you're only gaining probably eight, six or seven six, houses. Okay. It's just the fact of fine tune that a little bit. I mean, the 2.9 that's the general multiplier for net acreage. When you get into properties of only 10 acres in size, the street system for public right of way becomes a big factor. Um, the layout you have in your packet with the split zoning as proposed, it totals to 34 watts. And that includes the less desirable configuration there on the eastern end. Um, Mark 15, mathematically, you get over 22 lots, I think. Comfortably, you can get 22 at least. Depends on the creative genius of the surveyor, but you could probably squeeze in one or two more. But they would have to meet an R15 standard. Um, running a scenario of that on my own, not being a surveyor, but someone who can operate a crayon, um, I shifted the road a little bit to accommodate for a little more room for an R15 lot, and I came up with 22 um, based on that. But I also recognize there's some room left over which I chalked up to some of the lots um, probably necessarily having to be more than 15,000 square feet in order to fit around the streets. So, so in ballpark figures, 22 without, okay. 34 based on this design. So we're talking a dozen. At most, 12. Okay. And it would have to be stormwater. Some stormwater some retention will eat in for that. Yes. Any further questions for Mr. Howard? Thanks. 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 Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yes, I wanted to ask, but based on what you stated, you said it would approximately uh, have an impact of additional six, six homes, roughly? Six. Uh, as as it really depends on where the land is. Okay. be entrances through the existing neighborhoods now? Would that preclude any entrance from Cherry Creek? Well, <coughs> it's required to have at least two access points. So the two existing streets to the south would suffice. Okay. Um, but I think we would recognize channeling all of this traffic through that existing neighborhood would also not be desirable. So there would be an inclination to have one access onto Cherry Creek somewhere. And based on this frontage, lining up with the traffic light is really the only practical place, which is why they have designed it this way. Okay. Um, but I didn't go into the detail, but in the cover page, the last two paragraphs talk about the infill development nature of this. You've got an R15 density on one side and a higher residential on the other. And what they were proposing is a scenario of how to gradually transition from one to the other. And this is what they came up with. Okay. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak in favor of this case? If so, please come forward. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak against this case? Please step forward. State your name and address, please. I'm Joy Hall, associate broker at Cooper Real Estate, also homeowner and resident at 3528 Lunch Drive. Um, Addressing the current concern mostly about opening Sussex and Lenox. Uh, we have 54 resident homes in that subdivision, um, but seven part of our neighborhood is zoned, um, it's PRB 15, and then on the back side, which is in Windsor, that outskirts this proposed subdivision, is R15. In our development, which was developed in 1994, it's been a single road entry in and out since that time in 1994. Um, we also have homes in our subdivision that range from 1380 square feet up to 2211 square feet. So we're not in that small range that you're proposing, 1200 to 1600 square feet. The Kingswood subdivision does have larger homes. And uh, we want to maintain the integrity of our subdivision, keep it in the realm of Windsor Park and the Kingswood Estates. Um, I noticed that the proposal was open up <coughs> Lenox and Sussex for two ways in and out coming out of the southern part of that subdivision, or have a variance and not open those two streets. I know people have bought in there, but 
because it was a one in, one out subdivision. And it had the dead end street, you know, it was really a good asset to the subdivision. Also, the precedents in the area are single road in and out subdivisions, such as Oak Garden, Jennifer Circle, Brandon Subdivision, Hunter's Point, Arbor Run, Bellmead, Magnolia Plantation, and the Vineyards are single road entry and out. We also, coming into Wesley Road, which comes into Kingswood subdivision, we already have professional buildings coming in there. There's clients, there's patient traffic that comes in. We have already asked the city for help to monitor our subdivision. There's a curb coming in and out of Wesley. People park on it. We have no parking signs. We cannot get help. There's buses, a bus that comes in to get special needs children. There's children walking out to Oak Street to get on the bus. There's been an incident, a photo of the bus at Cherry Creek, and all that traffic at 7.30 in the morning already. No traffic light. Police, um, had a police car stop to help the kids get off and on the bus, but it was terrible. We're directly across from Dr. Chang's office, um, and it's just, Adding this extra development with a thoroughfare coming through Lennox and Sussex is not a safe situation. So we're trying to help that integrity stay in place. And if it is approved to open Sussex and Lennox, we certainly would want some barriers there, such as speed bumps, some painting on that curb, some clearing so we can see in and out. Um, it's a very dangerous situation on Wesley Drive. And we also want to maintain the integrity of the property and the subdivision. Any questions for this all? Thank you, ma'am. I do have a question made from Matt okay. regarding what uh, Joy was saying. I remember you saying something at work session about <coughs> process already being stuck out. And was that part of that original plan that they yes. to go through? They are under the same requirements because of the number of houses, and of course it was built in phases. Right. Um, it has only one entrance, and it really needs to have two. Right. So in an effort to further phased development, um, the last part of it, which is the northerly part of that particular development, stubbed out into this property. Okay. Remember the history of all of this area, these were five acre lots, there's a whole mm -hmm. column of them. From here southward all the way down to inner perimeter from 60 years ago. Um, and what had happened over time, and I remember 30 years ago some of this happened, we had the existing homes, large five acre lots, the house was near the front, and periodically one would sell off its backyard to a developer to do these interconnected um, high density single family neighborhoods. This latest phase was stubbed out as required into what was thought to be future development someday. It is, has taken 30 years uh, for it to materialize. And that's overall the traffic pattern, it works on both sides. Um, both of these would need more than one access point to get out. Because of the number of homes, that's what Collective, triggers correct. the simple in and out. Correct, and so both neighborhoods could benefit from each other giving each of them a choice whether they go out the south entrance or out the north entrance. The north entrance would have a traffic light to allow you to make a left turn a little more easily or go straight into North Oak Extension heading out to Beavis Road. Um, it provides a better level of safety for both to have those choices. Okay, thank you. Well, so Matt, now, in addition to, as you kind of mentioned, uh, the kind of with the intention and plan is for future growth and development for this area. So with the Sussex and Lennox Road was um, in essence stubbed out in preparation for future growth. Right. Lennox and, and Sussex used to look like the subject property. Yes, I, I remember. Um, so that being the case, it's the plan was already for this to take place and from this rezoning request, as of now, the current landowners to go forth and do a development where they could actually develop the space that wouldn't necessarily be in the layout that you presented, but they could actually go forth and, and do a development in the space. Is that correct? Correct. R15, single family residential, is just a little bit larger lot. Okay. 
Um, it would still have to be basically the same layout, just the lots would be larger. Doing a rough math, we're estimating 22 or a little more maybe um, based on land area. So that's the starting point is where we are now. It would still need to tie into those streets, still need to have an access point up to Cherry Creek. And in addition to that, having an additional access point would also make it a little easier for first responders to be able to get in and out um, uh, into that area should an emergency uh, take place. With that Correct. Um, for example, when you look at the zoning map, you see the Sussex and Lennox. If a fire truck were to visit up through there, they would have to back out all the way in order to make a, a three-point turn. Um, with an interconnected street pattern, at least on these streets, they could go forward and go out the other way or come in the other way if necessary. So yes, it works for public safety on multiple fronts. Just one more thing. <clears throat> so the PRD to the south is already over the 50 units that would trigger the second entrance that they would be required to I, I didn't do a count, but I'm eyeballing it. It looks like it is. There was one. So you counted, okay. <laughs> so really, they should have already had a second egress. Right, and what they were allowed to do 30 years ago was step out into future development. Because remember, all of that you see in that PRD to the south, that was not all developed at one time. That right. was done in phases. And it depended on how each of the backyards of the five acre lots were sold off. Okay. One thing that's interesting to note is Windsor uh, Park, those houses there, that was from the mid 60s. So they were the, always the northern capstone of this row of lots, and the incremental development would have always stopped where the subject property is. Is there anyone else here this evening that would like to speak against this case? If so, please come forward. State your name and address, please. Good evening. My name is Joe Leonard, and I live at 3531 Lennox. I'm also on a property on uh, 111 Fairway Drive in the estate of North. In an effort not to repeat what's already been said, my concern is with regards to the um, Cherry Creek light uh, would be that at the moment, um, as was stated, sorry to repeat, but it's quite crowded leaving the change of the state at the moment at 7 30 in the morning. And my concern is that the light at Cherry Creek, the proposed <coughs> right there, with the uh, uh, additional households and, and people wanting to get to work at 7 30 in the morning, that they could be hypothetically sitting at a light and think, you know what, I'm not going to wait for that light. There's 10 cars in front of me. I'm just going to go through Lennox or Sussex and go through. And I don't have to worry about a light onto uh, Cherry Creek. <coughs> what I'm trying to say is I think it's going to have, it could potentially have the opposite effect of um, causing more congestion and causing more traffic through the 54 houses. <coughs> We have about one minute. If there's anyone else who would like to speak against this case, we have about one minute remaining. My name is Prakul Shah. I live at 3541 Cherry Creek Road. And it is the north of extension street is already crowded by traffic. Sometimes traffic is backed up bumper to bumper all the way from that junction to the north side drive, passing all the uh, north Baldos Tower and all the way up to north side drive. That kind of traffic jam, this kind of development would not help that kind of traffic jam. So uh, I am against this development for that reason, for parking, etc., for traffic, etc. Thank you, sir. The time has run out for the public hearing, so I will close the public hearing on this matter. Commissioners, any questions or comments before we move forward? Yes, sir. No. Well, I, I just like to, I guess, 